Welcome to Football Analyzer, where data meets the pitch. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how to create the acute chronic workload in Power BI with a couple of methods that you might want to look at. So let's get started. If you haven't already, make sure you hit like and subscribe below and make sure to hit that notification bell icon so you are notified of future videos. So I said this week we're going to work through the acute chronic workload in Power BI. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of methods of how you can calculate it using just DAX and then we're going to move on to some R scripts in Power Query and also just create an R visual as well so I can show you both methods and the pitfalls. So let's get started and head straight over to my laptop. So here we are over on a report that I created a while back and this one is more of like a team dashboard so we can look at data but I'm just going to show you a quick snapshot of it and in here we've already got some training load data that is fictional uh, and as you can see on the screen we've got our um, or a view of total distance showing uh, an ACWR, a chronic load and then over time what that looks like so our little triangles are our acute chronic workload and our red bars are just our training load by day. So if we were to calculate it, our acute chronic workload normally, uh, just using DAX and uh, a couple of measures, we would use two. So we've got our seven day value, where we're going to sum our training load by day. So that will allow us to make sure that we're capturing everything. Um, so if you've got multiple sessions, things like that. Uh, and then we use a dates and period function to be able to tell the date table that we're looking for from the last date, seven days before that. And then to get our chronic load, we're going to use the same measure, essentially. We're just going to change the 7 to 28, and we're just going to divide it by 4, so we get a weekly value or a 4 weekly sort of average of that time. And then we're just literally going to go into another measure, go 7 day divided by a 28 day measure, and then we plot that, and we get this view here. What we will find is that we will get towards the start of our period, our training load period, values of around four and then after about four weeks that'll start to come down and then you'll get a really good view of what an acute chronic workload is for someone. Now that is one of the pitfalls of using this general method uh, and a lot of people want to be able to see a value from day one and that's where something like the exponentially weighted moving average comes in. It gives you a value from day one and it gives you the ability to be able to see a little bit more sensitively changes in load and also accounts for things that are happening sooner uh, better rather than this method where it's sort of just applying the same weighting to everything. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk through a couple of methods uh, of how you can create the EWMA, ACWR and Power BI. It's a bit of a mouthful but we can't really use DAX for this um, so we're going to have to use R and one of the ways we can do that or the first way we can do that is let's go over uh, into transform data. So recently we have been talking about uh, using um, R and scripts in Power Query. And so we did that recently and uh, today we're going to go through some of that to be able to create our ACWR here. So first of all what we're going to do before we go and transform data is we are going to change uh, our date here to a text value because we know from last time that that causes problems when we're transforming uh, with an R script. And then we're going to go to transform and run R script. So again, uh, for those that weren't with us last time, we're going to have our data set, this one in the table behind us, it's going to be loaded into a, I guess a data frame called data set. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to go into, I've got this copied off to one side, I'm just going to bring this over, uh, bring in a script that I had created previously. And this is just going to hold uh, all the information we need. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. It's come through a little bit funny, but that's okay. Uh, so now we can see here we've got a few things happening, but what we've got here is we've created a data set called data underscore pragma. Uh, and in that, uh, we're using this uh, library called pragma to be able to... Um, to add some of these new values. So we're using a moving average from the from the package and in that you can specify the type of average or moving average you want it to be. And the E stands for the EWMA, simple as that. Um, and then we're telling it we want it to look at total distance, 
Um, but one of the new things here is we're looking at a group by function. Um, this isn't something that we've talked about before, um, but essentially all it's doing is just grouping it by a value. So in this scenario, it's our athlete ID. So it'll look at this here, find all the ones, group them all together and use them. Then the second step is we're actually arranging it. Uh, we probably don't need the athlete ID, but I'm gonna leave it there. Um, but then we've got the date. So that's just telling it to arrange the date in order. So if the data set doesn't come in in order, it'll make sure it is. Uh, but the first thing we need to do here, I just noticed is we are missing our date here. We also need to actually add in here, library, uh, Lubra date. So we're gonna go date equals day, month, year, date. Need to put it in capitals, two of those, and then our pipe. So now that we've got that, let's go date uh, data underscore pragma, and we're gonna click OK. We'll see if there's any errors pop up, and if they are, we'll fix those. Uh, but hopefully this will just run the first time. So as you can see here, the data set's already loaded. Quick as that, simple as that. So if we scroll over to our right, we will find that we now have some values here. So we've got our seven day uh, rolling average from Pragma, our 28 day, and then also our ACWR. So let's go ahead, we'll just go and close and apply that. It's gonna load it into Power BI. And then once that's loaded, uh, the benefit of this method uh, for those interested is that because it's loading it into the model, there's no calculation required. Uh, as soon as you've got it in there, um, once it loads back up again, uh, we will have the columns appear. So we can see here we've got Pragma, um, ACWR, we've got our rolling averages here. So we've already got these values, so let's just go here, we'll make a measure. And what we're gonna do is, uh, we're just going to go EWMA underscore ACWR equals. And then what we'll do is we'll just go and say, this one here, we don't really need to do anything. Oh, I need to actually type out average. And then we're just going to go Pragma E ACWR brackets. And then what we'll do is we'll just add it to our second graph here. And then I need to just add that to our line axis. And then we can see it there. What I will do is I will format that and we'll change our oh, we'll go lines here. And then we will change this to our triangles. We'll turn off our line so it's the same as the one above. And we'll make our marker just a little bit bigger. And the color just a little bit more gray. Oh, I need to undo that. Let's just leave it at that there oh I've gone and changed everything here didn't realize it was going to change everything um, I'll just go back twice let's do that okay we'll just leave it at this for now but we can see we've already got our ACW here uh, and our line kind of just already appears. Um, it is a little bit more sensitive to the changes, and so you'll see that jump up quite quickly. Whereas you can see sort of in our first one here, there's no real adjustments. It kind of flows quite nicely rather than these little jaggedy bits. Um, but what you get is um, closer training load accounted for a little bit better. So when somebody has a real spike the day before, you might see that spike appear. Um, but that's one method of calculating it. Quite quick, quite simple, loads into your data set. You do have um, the ability to see the rolling values, so you can go and troubleshoot if you have any issues. Now our other method is very much the same code, but slightly different, and we're gonna use an R visual. So this is more of an added bonus for those that wanna see it. Um, and to get started, all we're gonna do is just select our data set from our data fields on the side. So we're gonna go through and Power BI will just start building a visual that it thinks makes sense. I'm gonna include the old ACWR uh, from our top graph here. And I'm also gonna add in uh, total distance at the bottom. So we've got these four values. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. And we're gonna click this drop down and then click R script. So now very much the same as in Power Query, uh, R has loaded a data set. 
it's going to add those values as a data frame and then it's going to find the unique values of that data set that's one thing to be aware of and you need to be careful with um, and then the next thing again i'm just going to pull a visual uh, a bit of code from the side here and then we'll talk through it so exactly the same uh, we've got our got to load our packages that we want it to use and then we're going to start to add in the code that we want so again very much the same thing we're going to use our data set but this time we don't need to tell R that date is a date it's going to know that already based on our data set uh, and then we're going to arrange it again and then we're going to mutate add our values and then calculate our pragma ecwr but the next step is calculate or creating our graph so there's a few steps to this one um, as you can see we're using ggplot and in that we just need to tell it a few things so the first step is just creating our aesthetics so when i say that i just mean what do we have on each axis so the first one as a global one, we're gonna put date on our X and we're gonna group it one. Uh, and then our bar graph, uh, we're gonna add that first. And so that's our total distance so we can see it by date. And we do need to tell it stat identity. If we don't do that, it won't create the bar graph. And then our next step is creating our, our line graph here. Um, and we're gonna tell it to scale this. So one of the funny things with R is that it doesn't plot things on the different axes well. Our secondary axis is more of like an aesthetic thing rather than actually being plotted against it. So we need to scale them appropriately. So in this scenario, we're gonna scale it by 10,000. Um, so we're gonna times our ACWR by 10,000 and our AC, normal ACWR that we calculated with DAX by 10,000. But then our secondary axis is gonna be scaled down by 10,000. So we get the view that we want. So now we've plotted, created our plot. Uh, and then we're just gonna tell it that we want it to return our plot at the bottom off to the right here there's a little play button we can click that and then we'll see it spinning and then we'll just see where our issues arise um, and it's just not wanted to I'm gonna see if it's to do with these things I'm not sure what they've come from um, but we'll get rid of these they are probably our issue and then we'll click play again we'll see how we get on so spinning 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 there we go so now we can see our graph once we resize it we do need to click play again and then I am going to lower this so we can see here we've got both of our ACWRs plotted and we can see that we've got our our initial or our normal version ACWR here starting. It says 4,000 on the left here, but on the right we've got four, and then it starts to drop down. Whereas our uh, EWMA version plots a little sooner and a little better. It does rise here with our load, which is kind of what you might expect, and then it starts to drop back down to a normal level. So if we do lower this, uh, as I was mentioning, the one difference here is that um, this is being calculated on the fly, so it will possibly have a little bit of a delay. So if we change athlete, we can see it's still spinning in the top left, and then now there's our data. So if we choose another one, we do have a few seconds we have to wait. But that doesn't uh, necessarily mean a bad thing. Um, you can probably customize this visual a little bit more than what you can with the built-in version. Um, but it's just something to be mindful of if you're wanting speed uh, DAX is probably the way to go or calculating it in Power Query um, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get the same kind of uh, value here so there's two methods of calculating uh, the acute chronic workload or uh, yeah two methods of calculating it and then two options for calculating our EWMA and Power BI uh, if you have liked this video make sure you hit like and subscribe below uh, Hit that notification bell icon so you're notified of future videos. And I'll see you here back next time, Football Analyzer, where data meets the pitch. Thanks.